Urban Renewal and its 21st Century Redo, Lessons from Southwest DC. How can a city manage the impacts of a failed urban renewal project? Is there a way to recognize the mistakes of post-war neighborhood clearance and pursue development more responsibly? One neighborhood in the nation's capital provides a valuable example of massive clearance and displacement in the post-war era and a modern effort to take a more thoughtful approach. Southwest Washington, D.C., one of the city's oldest neighborhoods, began as a bustling inland port and commercial center in the early 19th century. Ships brought goods in and out of the southwest waterfront's many wharves, and roads and railways connected the waterfront to the rest of the city and the region. During the Civil War, the area was converted to serve military needs, as troops and supplies moved into and out of the city via the southwest waterfront. Much of the housing that was built during this period would remain in the neighborhood well into the next century. During the Great Migration of the early 1900s, large numbers of African Americans from the southern states came to Washington, with many settling in Southwest. The neighborhood soon became the city's largest and most prominent African American community. As black residents and businesses thrived, more continued to arrive, and the population steadily increased, peaking at nearly 35,000 people. As the population grew, the area's relatively poor living conditions became more severe. More people than available houses led to the creation of rudimentary alley homes, and the neighborhood overall lacked many basic services. A DC government report in 1952 found that 43% of the dwelling units in Southwest had no inside toilet, 27% lacked running water, and 70% had no central heating. Additionally, many of the streets remained unpaved. Over time, city and federal officials became frustrated by the proximity of these substandard conditions to the core of the nation's capital, and many began calling for redevelopment in Southwest. Labeling the area blighted, they asserted that it needed to be cleared for new, modern developments. In response to growing concerns about the living conditions and perceived blight in Southwest, the neighborhood became the target of the country's first major project of federally supported urban renewal, marking the beginning of a process that would later affect hundreds of neighborhoods throughout Washington and the nation. Urban renewal in Southwest was carried out in three sections, each of which began with significant acquisition of land by the DC Redevelopment Land Agency attempting to use eminent domain to assemble private land, the RLA faced stiff resistance from landowners that eventually resulted in the landmark Supreme Court case, Berman v. Parker. In this case, the court ruled in favor of the RLA, finding that urban redevelopment was a valid public purpose for the use of eminent domain, even if the land was later sold to private developers. This set a major precedent for the constitutionality of eminent domain, facilitating urban renewal across the country. It also extinguished any hope of preventing widespread destruction in the Southwest. With the legal challenges defeated, land clearance was completed in Southwest, resulting in the destruction of 4,800 businesses and the displacement of over 23,000 people from 400 acres of land. The new developments that were built on the cleared land bore no resemblance to the neighborhood they had destroyed. A new highway sliced through the northern tier of the neighborhood, isolating it from downtown. Sprawling campuses of federal office buildings towered where small row houses had recently stood. High-end housing, ample parking, and the new Waterside Mall invited middle-class white residents of the suburbs to move into Southwest. The new neighborhood that was built became largely inaccessible to many of the African-American residents who had been displaced. In the decade of the 1950s alone, census data shows a significant exodus of black residents from Southwest, many of whom were permanently displaced to other DC neighborhoods or to Maryland. The full urban renewal plan of Southwest was finally completed in 1970, but by this point, the newly built neighborhood was already falling behind the initial hopes for its vibrancy. Local interest and investment had turned to other urban renewal areas in Northeast and Northwest, and the Southwest urban renewal area almost
almost immediately gained a tarnished reputation for its disastrous displacement of tens of thousands of people. By the early 21st century, it was clear that urban renewal in Southwest had failed to achieve the vibrant, prosperous community its designers had hoped to create. Waterside Mall was closed in 2007, marking an acceptance of the shortcomings of the renewal projects. The once bustling Southwest waterfront became a utilitarian district that hosted mega restaurants, parking lots, and cheap motels that catered to busloads of budget tourists. The riverfront itself was fenced off and essentially forgotten. Beginning in the early 2000s, interest began to accumulate for modern revitalization of Southwest, particularly around the waterfront. In August 2004, Mayor Anthony Williams signed legislation creating the Anacostia Waterfront Corporation, a body tasked with pursuing revitalization of DC's waterfront areas throughout the city, including in Southwest. The AWC began to plan for what would eventually become the Wharf, a major mixed-use development along the Southwest waterfront. For the task of redeveloping the Southwest waterfront, the AWC selected Monty Hoffman of the development firm PN Hoffman as the lead developer. Hoffman, along with many architects and other developers, created a vision for a large planned unit development spanning the length of the waterfront that would include housing, dining, retail, event, and recreational spaces. The project was initially stalled by financial difficulties and bureaucratic hurdles, but firm support from the district government helped carry it forward. Plans were finalized for a 19-acre site along and extending into the water. Construction of the wharf was divided in two phases, with the first breaking ground in 2014. In total, 11 acres of land were cleared for Phase 1, and another 8 acres for Phase 2. Notable places that were preserved included the Main Avenue Fish Market, the Capitol Yacht Club, and the Main Lobster Man Memorial. Phase 1 opened in 2017, and Phase 2 remains under construction. In the years it has been open, the wharf has received a much more positive reputation than the urban renewal projects did and has demonstrated an ability to attract investment and visitors without entirely leveling the existing neighborhood in the process. The wharf also includes numerous units of affordable housing in an effort to chart a more equitable path of urban revitalization. Despite its successes, however, the wharf is not devoid of controversy. Many have voiced concerns that the upscale style and amenities of the development will contribute to gentrification and indirect displacement in Southwest. Moreover, critics have noted that the affordable housing included in the wharf is neither ample nor affordable enough to offer a meaningful counterbalance to potential gentrification. The post-war urban renewal of Southwest Washington, D.C. set a national precedent for massive programs of neighborhood clearance that subsequently failed to replace what was raised with a new neighborhood of the level of vibrancy that was promised. The most significant legacy of urban renewal in Southwest was its displacement of tens of thousands of residents and destruction of a community, rather than the positive legacy of any benefits delivered. After decades of disinvestment, Washington has revisited Southwest in the hopes of setting a better example of the development of the wharf. While the wharf is not perfect, and bears some similarities to urban renewal projects of the past in land clearance and broad goals, it has succeeded in offering a model for large-scale urban redevelopment that is more conscious of its impact and avoids the catastrophic damages of its post-war predecessor.